Mary was not perfect. She was a woman like us. She was not perfect. And Mary, in the midst of Jesus' ministry, became concerned, worried about Jesus' well-being. And she came to him. And we see this in Mark, the third chapter. Jesus had entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. Then Jesus' mothers and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. They were concerned. They were worried. Jesus is being overwhelmed. He is not eating. He's not taking care of himself. He, he needs our intervention. So Mary and his brothers went to find Jesus and to intervene on his behalf. They were concerned with his physical well-being, having lost sight of his spiritual mandate to seek and to save that which was lost. And so Mary was confronted, and Jesus said, Are these not my mothers and brothers? Jesus replied in Luke 8, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. Now, if any of us here are perfect, please stand up. We know that we're not perfect. We sometimes say things that we regret. We sometimes do things that we regret. And as mothers, particularly, you can look at instances in your life when you would have done something differently. Right? True? True. I know it is true for me. There are things, times when I've said or done things that later I said that was not the best way to have handled that situation. And so Mary had to reflect on the fact that her intervention at this point was not in keeping with God's will for Jesus. Because Jesus would come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that as he is challenging his mother to listen and to hear God's word, and not only to hear it, to put it into practice. So we too need to be reminded that we need to listen to God's word. Amen? Amen? And we need to put it into practice. And we do that by seeking God's face, by praying, by reading his word, to hear for ourselves what God would have us do. And as we do that, we know that we can continue to be one of God's chosen vessels. Mary was faithful, Amen. even in the dark times, even in the difficulties. We read in John, the 19th chapter, an interesting thing as I was preparing for this, the book of John never calls Mary by her name. The book of John never calls Mary by her name. Interesting. I've never really thought of that until I was searching. There is no place where he calls Mary by her name. But he says this very important thing. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Mary was at the foot of the cross, there to see the worst moment of her life, her own son nailed to a cross, bleeding, gasping, dying, for the world. Near the cross of Jesus stood 
his mother. Faithful to the last. Faithful to the last. And we too need to be faithful to the ministry, to the calling God has on our lives as Christian women, as Christian mothers. That we need to be faithful and count on God to see us through. That even as Jesus died that day, he has died on behalf of our children. And we just need to continue to pray and to seek his face for the salvation of our children. That dark time did not last because on Sunday, among the women, I truly believe that Mary was counted among the women. We see and read in Matthew that among the women were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and also the mother of Zebedee's sons. And then those same women were sitting there opposite the tomb. And after the Sabbath day at dawn on the first day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they now anoint Jesus' body. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told all of this to the apostles, to the disciples. So God rewarded her faithfulness to see and witness the resurrection of Jesus and the fulfillment of all that he had come to do. Faithful to the end. Can those who come behind us call us faithful? Can we be counted among those who stay to the end? That regardless of the, what comes and goes in our life, the, the joys and the sorrows, that we too will be faithful to the end. Amen? Amen. Today you have been chosen. You have been chosen to be a mother. And I challenge you to take it seriously. That it's a, a great responsibility to be a mother, the mother of children. That their future and their growth and development rests in your hands. And so this morning, as we think, let us be good examples of motherhood. Help us to remain faithful, nurture, instruct, be in God's work, involved in his work, and faithful even to the end. Now I invite all the mothers who have to come forward, and I invite their children who are here to come and put their hands upon their mothers, and let us pray for our mothers to take up and to continue to take the challenge that God has given to them, chosen to be a mother. So other, I invite all mothers to come forward and stand across the front. And then I invite, as the mothers come, I invite their children to come and stand behind them, put their hand on their shoulder. And for those who have no children present, I invite someone who has no mother present to come and to stand and to pray for those who are here. If you don't have a child here present, raise your hand. I know you need to, you have, you have double duty today. If you don't have a child present, please raise your hand. So that, okay, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people to come and pray. Present. You don't have a mother present. Come and pray for one of them. Deshaun. 
down. Come forward. Your child can not necessarily pray for you, but we'll pray. Okay? Right. Oh, she's speaking. Okay, we'll pray from afar. All right? All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our mothers to you right now. We thank you that you chose them to be mothers, that you chose them for this special task and responsibility. Father, you know where their children are right now. Some are here worshiping together. Some are not able to be here. They may be far away or they may be um, working or maybe occupied in other ways. But Father, right now we lift up the mothers and we pray that you would give them strength and courage. We pray that you would continue to make them firm in their faith that they would begin, continue to be able to guide and direct their families. Many have not only children that they are caring for, but also grandchildren. And Father, we ask that you give them the strength for the day, that you would help them as they instruct and guide and direct, and that you would help them to be faithful to the end. Father, right now we pray for their children, wherever they may be. And we ask that you lay your hand upon them, that this Mother's Day, they will know that you are God, and that you have wonderful things planned for their lives if they would only submit themselves to your care and your keeping. Father God, we give you honor and glory and praise, and we just thank you for your love for us. For we pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats.
Thank you. 